So good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and a very warm welcome to Foxbit Eventing Live on YouTube. And I'm joined back by popular demand by Jackie Potts. Hi. Well, we had such a good time the <laughs> yeah, other day. And um, we got cut short. And we are going to keep it really tight today because, of course, we're all going to be out on the streets um, applauding our fantastic NHS staff at eight o'clock. So half an hour. Yeah. And we must just remind you that we have been um, social isolating together. That's why we can sit in close proximity, because throughout this lockdown period, we've been one family unit here on the yard. So Jackie and I can uh, sit uh, close together tonight. So we've got half an hour and we thought we'd look back on all sorts of different things. Of course, you'll remember that Jackie Potts has been with us for 27 seasons. She's done eight European championships, four Olympic Games, five World Equestrian Games. 17 badmintons so there is no one with a greater font of knowledge than our very own Jackie Potts or Grands as we call her here in Foxbit Equestrian and welcome to everyone from all around the world because we had the most phenomenal response um, to our last Q&A with Jackie so we thought we ought to give you the opportunity to get those questions in again so Grands how have you been since we last chatted? Yeah really good I mean exciting news now that in England we're having the restrictions lifted gradually so we can start to think about eventing. Mm. I mean That's whether really we good. get eventing we don't know do we yeah. but we do now know that we can do lessons which is great so um, people will start coming here to Wood Lane Stables we've got social distancing policy in place now and we will be allowing people to come here for lessons with William um, here in the outdoor school and he is also going off for training which is exciting yeah no really good you know it just seems to think that things are moving along a little bit now mm -hmm. and good to get the horses thinking a little bit more about a competition mm -hmm. it'll be very exciting for people though who perhaps haven't had the opportunity to get to their horses because of this awful situation where they haven't been allowed to go to yeah. the yard I mean you've got to feel for them haven't you uh, I mean we've been so lucky the fact that we live on the yard and we've been with the horses because they are great therapy in themselves, aren't they? They have. They've been incredible yeah. therapy, haven't they? Um, so for any of you who haven't been able to get to your horses, you know, we our heart goes out to you. But I'm hoping with these slight lift in restrictions that maybe you have been able to get onto the yard and see your horses. And we thought that we would perhaps give you a few lockdown checklists to um as we come out of lockdown what you should be looking for and thinking about um in terms of your horses because it's going to be really easy to forget stuff and perhaps your horses have had a very quiet time over the last seven weeks and you haven't been able to do what you want or perhaps you just eased off their work so jackie and i thought we'd chat with you about that but please do start sending your questions in we love to have your questions and um we've got all sorts coming in we've got um some lovely people being very excited, Jackie, Good. about seeing Good. you. Um, and uh, Matthew Rippon saying hi. Lots of people saying good evening, but no questions yet. Um, so let's have a, a, a chat about the first sort of things that you would advise people to start thinking about now we're coming out of lockdown. Yeah, I mean, you know I love a list, so I've already love a list. Love a list. Already compiled one. Um, you've got to think about what, like you say, some people haven't been able to go and see their horses. So what your horse has been doing, how fit he is, he or she, um, and what you're aiming to do as well. It'd be very easy to be lulled into that false sense of security. It's the start of your program, so take it right back to as if those horses had had yeah. a winter break. I think you know, maybe aim for an event that you think might be running or you might be able to go to. Mm. Um, I think if any of your horses have been doing like a normal school and maybe a jump once a week, now that we've been able to start doing that, you're probably three or four weeks off being able to go around an event and just an easy one. What is um, your program? So, say we've had a horse that's been in the field for six weeks. Right, we get in from the field. What would be, uh, where would you, where would you start? Um, well, we're very lucky that we actually use the walker for a week and let them go on the walker uh, without shoes often as well. <laughs> um, and it just hardens their feet off and gets them used to, you know, get, getting on the normal exercise. Um, we then would ideally hack for four weeks, but you know, at the moment we've just been hacking around the fields. So it's a whole new concept of how you get the horse fit in that respect. And I think you've got to have a little bit of leeway either way. Mm -hmm. And then you do two weeks of trotting. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the two weeks trotting, introduce some canter. And again, two weeks cantering before you'd have a bit of a jump. 
I suppose it's exactly the same yeah. as if you guys have been shut up in your flat and a lot of you are, are, are massive experts and we've already got people from all around the world checking in. So Flat Jump, great to hear from you. Thank you so much for logging in from Kentucky. We were gutted not to go out to Kentucky and yeah. you've flown out there so many. How I many know. times have you been? I think about, oh, nine or ten. <laughs> yeah, nine or ten really trips lucky. and we love it there. We've been lucky enough to have um, three wins in Kentucky. So mm -hmm. great to hear from you. I'm wishing you well, Flat Junk. And Kathleen Henderson, Hello from New Zealand. What time would it be? It must be quite early in the morning. It must be in the middle of the day. Night, wasn't it? Since the middle of the day, it must be night. It's really early for you. So, Catherine, great to hear from you. Oh, and yeah. I hope that all of you all around the world are safe um, in this awful lockdown period. And um, we were talking about, you know, if you start to bring these, these horses back into work, it's a bit like if all of us have been in shutdown. And I've been kind of trying to exercise, but I haven't been in the Joe Wicks yeah. program. No, lots of people are, have been yeah. in. And William, we're in William's office actually at the moment. We've snuck in because I don't know any of you who joined us last time. You may remember that we had a bit of, bit of interruption. Background noise. Background noise. Yeah. That's how I put it. <laughs> Background noise where William just came in and started just kind of crashing around in our kitchen, um, not really respecting the fact we were trying to do a tele program. So we've come to the office this time and uh, his exercise bike's behind us and he's been really active on that and really yeah. trying to maintain that. Yeah, it's been very level. good. Because that's the thing, that, sorry, <laughs> that's the thing as well that you, as a rider, to fit yourself mm. because it's so easy to have an unfit horse and a tired rider mm. and the two aren't a great combination not a great combination no. and also from if you want to compare yourself to your horse mm. if you came straight out of lockdown and went for a 5k you're not going to feel great and that's the same yeah. with your horse exactly isn't it? yeah and i think another important thing is it's very easy to think oh i'll start feeding him up a bit now you know you'll need more energy uh, feed after they've got up in their exercise because mm. <laughs> again you've got the problems of overfeeding them being too fresh tying up your policy on feeding is something that always really surprises me and mm. it's because you're a great feeder but you're a very cautious feeder aren't you yeah and spillers is a company that we work with and have worked with well throughout the time yeah. that i've known you um just talk us through a little bit the philosophy of your feeding because i have never known horses look so good on so little and I don't mean that in the wrong way yeah no I think really important is your forage as well so if you've got good quality forage then you can supplement it with a good quality feed mm -hmm. which again you don't need so much of if it's good quality um what is how what is your hay feeding regime um most of the horses are on four times a day that's when they're in stable all the time and then they'd have two lots of hay and two lots of haylage nice to give them a bit of a mix but our haylage would be very low in juice, oh, yeah. wouldn't it? Yeah. Because you can get haylage that's quite spicy, you know, quite high mm. in protein content, and that can be quite quite powerful for the horses. One thing I think is interesting with you as well is you like to feed their hay before you give them their hard feed in the morning, don't you? Yeah, I think. Why? Why is that? Well, personally, I think it's really good for if they've got a tendency to have any ulcers, and it's good to just line their stomach a little bit before they get the hard feed because. In some respects, it's a very unnatural thing to do is to feed a horse hard feed. Mm. So you'd come on the yard, go straight round and hay round before you do anything yeah, else. Yeah, and it's also a good time to check them as well. You know, just see how they are. Are they okay this morning? And especially feeling their legs, mm. you know, before they go out of the stable. It's very mm. easy on a bigger yard to maybe miss something. So it's a good, nice, quiet time. Just have a little feel down. We love the system. I love the system. Love the system. We love our country. Love the system. Um, so we've done the hay, we've talked about the hay, but the yeah. feeding, I'll come back to the feeding because spillers is very much the core feed that we feed. And then you are always researching other things to bring in mm. and over the top. And um, Equestro is our um, supplement supplier and um, they have a huge range. But again, yeah. you're always researching other things. Aren't you? So what would be your baseline feed regime with spillers? I mean, say we had a new horse come in or you're starting feeding the horse that's been off and wants a little bit to you know keep him going and um, we like to feed a bit of chaff as well chaff or some of the spillers alfalfa pro um can i just be really rude i've got our first question oh hi. grace but i'm not sure you're going to want to answer this oh no <laughs> grace says how old are you oh gosh grace that's so <laughs> rude you don't ask a lady how old she is no i don't mind because you're as old as you are aren't you can't do anything about it and you've been here for such oh, a long time i'm 57 isn't she incredible? So the good answer to that is, oh, you don't look that. <laughs> <laughs> and luckily we can't hear you, Grace, so that's all right, isn't it? So back to our feeding yep. in the 57 years of experience that you've <laughs> yeah. had. Um, tell us, so so you, that baseline is the layoff cube. Yeah. 
I love spillers because you know what you're getting. It's always the same. Mm -hmm. We basically feed three types of cubes, lay off, slow response, and then power cubes for the slugs, really. <laughs> but that's not often. And, the, and it's quite interesting. The, for, for people who perhaps aren't training the higher end horses, the change in feed and the effect it can mm. have on your horse and its behavior is really, really um, serious. I mean, it can really change it to the point where William and you would never feed power cubes on, say, a Thursday night before a dressage test, would no, you? No, no. Because you, I, I know it's supposed to be two weeks, you know, before something kicks in, but I think even just a couple of feeds of it, some horses can change like that. Mm. So um, your baseline is your layoff, and then you'd go up to the slow release. Yeah. And um, how much are you feeding? We tend to feed by scoop. We don't actually weigh it out because we feed by looking at the horse and how they are, how they feel, how they're going. How and they're people behaving. might say that's a bit old fashioned, but you know, using your eye, yeah. isn't it? And your feel is yeah. so important. It's great to have scientific backup, but I think this is what you need to develop the mm -hmm. horseman's eye. Mm -hmm. um, Grace has asked another question. Grace, you're fantastic. Thanks, Grace, like for the Grace. questions. Anyone else, do fire the questions in. Um, who was your first horse, Jackie? My personal horse or horse here? Well, I don't know. She oh. just says, who was your first horse? First horse here would have been Charka. And yeah, Charka... Many years ago. That is many years ago. And his career was amazing. He, he sort of... He came to William having had a bit of experience, but with Not a bit really of a reputation. getting to the top, yeah. And then what happened? Yeah. Then he went on to win most of the one days, most of the advanced one days every year. And Burley and Gatcom Open. Amazing, great horse. And he was in the lead at Badminton. Yeah, yes. Would have won Badminton, but wasn't sound enough to jump on the Sunday. That must have been one of the worst days ever, wasn't it? Well, the highs are better with the lows. <laughs> <laughs> You're such a philosophical old thing. Okay. Um, so the feeding side, yeah, that's mm. interesting because your horses here always look gleaming and they always carry quite a lot of condition that you yeah. have a way with William of getting them fit without really without them really knowing it yeah and I think because they have a holiday and they go out on the grass we're very much turner outers they can put that little bit away that they've got something to turn into muscle mm -hmm. and that's as important as anything mm -hmm. that they're on good grass and we're very lucky aren't we um in terms of um how we um we get the facilities we have on site we've got yeah. another question um will it be easier to get the young or the older horses back to fitness that's a really good question actually i'm sorry i can't quite see your name but it'll come up in a minute um what's your take on that with the old or the young horse? um i think if an old horse has been off completely it's probably more difficult to get them back but i think a more experienced horse that's just had an easier time would probably be easier than a younger horse in that respect because they've been fit already mm -hmm. and that core fitness it takes quite a lot to yeah. lose that doesn't yeah it? especially a real a really competitive horse they sort mm. of want to keep fit you know to keep going mm. but that said even if you mm. are getting an older horse you still need to keep that really responsible routine and keep your yeah. patience yeah. in terms of the horse's welfare has got to come first. And you may be thinking, oh, I really want yeah. to get going. I really want to get going. But that systematic approach will pay dividends later on in the season for sure. Yeah. And I think also what we have to think about is the ground must be like concrete at the moment. Mm. So it's really, you know, everybody would love to go out going, charging along, going cross country schooling, but is the ground too hard? Mm. I have to take that into consideration. Yeah, VJ, thanks for that question. That was a good one. Um, how old were you when you started riding? Grace is asking us another question. Thanks, Grace. <laughs> um, I was 10. Were you? Yeah, I was 10. I went to the local riding school with my friend because she wanted somebody to go with her, mm. and she stopped riding and I carried on. And did you always envisage that grooming would be your career? Not at first, no. I think as I got older, and my sister you always said to me, you need to find a you know, proper job. And I did work in an office for a while, and I, it wasn't me. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine. No, it wasn't me Well, at actually, all. maybe I can. I'm not sure. You're very efficient. You like a list. Um, but what about career grooms? Because I know that's a bit of a bugbear for you, that yeah. perhaps more people aren't seeing it as a career. And it's something you've been working on with the Grooms Association and with the FBI. Yeah. I mean, I think it's really important nowadays that, especially as it's got a higher competition standard, that we are looking for career grooms that are learning experience because that's the thing with the horses as well having that experience and the FBI have now said that they're going to do a registration of grooms for at the 
four or five star events, which is really good because not only are they recognising grooms, but also grooms have then got to cleave up to a standard. Mm -hmm. and I think that's as important. And what as will anything. that registration entail? Um, basically, like a vet or a physio. So you won't be allowed on site unless your name is down on the register. Gosh. And will that be a cost to grooms? Or I, not? At the moment, I don't think so. Mm. Um, I couldn't swear to it, but mm. I don't think so. Mm. But it's the fact that you have to be recognised. Mm. And that, I think that's yeah, a really good thing. Really important. Yeah. Um, and from your point of view, when for you did you think, yeah, this is this is for me? Or did it has it just evolved? Um, it evolved for a certain amount of time. But I think in my 20s, I found that I was working to finance my horse side. Mm. And so it seemed ridiculous to not do the thing that you loved every day. And there was a time when you thought about looking at, at um, going in and, and working with the police horses, wasn't there? There was just yeah. one little moment where you thought about it when William moved to Dorset and things were changing. Yeah. And you looked around a little bit, but your core passion and your knowledge always pulled you back to this yeah, topic. I think that's the thing. If you love something, then whatever else you do is second best. Yeah. Yeah. And it was always going to be horses. Yes. You? Yeah. And but um, the people as well, and and your encouragement in terms of the younger people who come in. Um, what's your sort of thinking behind that and supporting people here um, in terms of their education? Well, I really, I mean, it's been great fun as well. You know, we've had some lovely people through, and I really like to see somebody blossom not only in their knowledge, but as a person. Mm -hmm. You know, we often say, especially with the boys, they turn up as a boy and leave as a man. <laughs> <laughs> well, we hope. <laughs> but it's great to see people use their initiative mm. and also the caring of them. Mm. You know, mm. it's not just about riding and also it's about getting results mm. and teams and medals, etc. But it's also about the welfare and the care of the horse. Mm. And talking of that, we need to get back down to our lockdown. Oh, oh. Kathleen's just been in touch. It's six thirty on Friday morning for her in New Zealand. Oh, so, oh you're up bright and early, it's getting very keen, getting ready for the horses yeah. go. Really good to have you with us. Um, just if we go back to our lockdown checklist. So we've talked about feeding. Yeah. We've talked about the program to bring them back into work. What about the sort of physical practicalities of things that you mustn't forget to double check before you think you start going out to competitions yeah. well I think with the shoeing I mean we've actually here not had stud holes put in for the last couple of months because it's all expense and adding up so it'd be very easy to go to an event with no stud holes <laughs> in which has happened once before <laughs> and um, it's not ideal you know because we also have to think about what are we going to do about barriers there etc um, so important to check your shoes um, especially your vaccinations because again, we just let the six monthly ones go because at one point the vets weren't allowed to come out anyway. Mm -hmm. And are the BEF going to still want them in that six monthly mm -hmm. time for the vaccination? Mm -hmm. So it'd be really good just to check through your passports, mm -hmm. check your shoes, mm -hmm. check probably the week before you're going to go anywhere that your lorry does start <laughs> and that it's not covered in mould or mushrooms. And also your social distancing measures when you're there as well. What things do you need to take and how are you going to cope with it there? I think that's a really good point because if you're going to try and perform and mm. compete within the new normal, yeah. how is that going to play out? And how is it now from what we've heard so far, um, what are the measures if an event should take place? What are the measures that you know so far are potentially the things we're going to be dealing with? Well, it's going to be quite an isolated competition in itself, really, for everyone. You know, we've all got to be quite diligent that we're not riding next to somebody having a nice chat, which is, you know, tempting because you've not seen your friends for ages. And the same for the grooms, you know, no going off to the dressage, oh, blah, 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 as you're going along. Um, I know that numbers are going to be printed off the night before. Mm -hmm. Lorries are going to be parked away from each other. There's going to be certain times that you're supposed to arrive and leave. So it's going to be very different from our norm. It's going to be really challenging for yeah. riders, for grooms, but also for organisers. And we really hope that the organisers take up the challenge to, to put on some events mm -hmm. because there's a lot of people waiting to go, but they may be limited to the number of horses that they can run in a day because of logistics of having people on site or not. Yeah. And so, of course, that's going to have an economic impact into whether it's viable to run these events or not. Probably the main event we're waiting to hear on in terms of our big calendar here in the UK is Burley. Burley has yet to officially cancel. Yeah. This week we lost um, the Blair International Horse Trials and I know that the family at Blair will be devastated to have given that up. Um, it's been a, a long-standing real focus in Scotland and a 
for that end of August before we head to Burley, um, heading up to Blair. We've loved it up there, yeah. haven't we? It's sad, sad, but it's you know inevitable, isn't it? So I suppose now it's really whether those autumn events or anything can come together for the autumn event and um, what's mm. happening at the grassroots. And we've got um, another question that's come in. Um, how's the team doing? I think the team's doing really well. They've mm. been very positive. Mm. Um, it's actually in some ways that the same as people have said about their families. It's pulled everybody together even more because we've all been in the same boat and we've made the best of it. Yeah, um, it's been really interesting how everybody's pulled together. We've got an incredible team here. If you've seen our Meet the Team features on um, our on the YouTube channel, you'll see just the diverse um, and interesting people we've got here who've got horse welfare really front and centre as their focus, as well as their own careers and ambitions. And um, obviously you've got your second head, Adam Short. I mean, he's great at yeah. keeping everyone's morale. Yeah, isn't he? very much so. Mm. I mean, he's he's always a bright spark from half three in the morning till half three at night. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite amazing um and then of course lexi um lexi scoville who's with us from the states she is um a a brilliant rider and b an incredibly focused athlete yeah she? yeah i mean i was quite impressed the first event i went to with, with her she was very self-sufficient mm. real planned got on with it mm. but professional to the end and i feel desperately sorry for her because you know she has come here on a sports visa because she's really trying to catch the eye of the US selectors and I was really hoping this year that she may have made it on to one of the nation's cup teams um, yeah. she's got the most incredible horse Sprout yeah. and if you follow her on her social media channels you'll see it's um, Sprout and Lexi's um, big adventure and they really are on this big adventure and she's left her family her friends and come to the other side of the world and lockdown for her is a, is a really big deal what about yeah. Kazu I mean Kazu you're his right hand lady um, and dealing with the fact, and he talked to us about it in his Meet the Team on the YouTube channel, but how has he coped mentally with the Home Olympics being postponed and um, and how to refocus around that? Yeah, I mean, it must be very difficult for him, but I think they're a nation that are brought up to carry on a little bit like the stiff upper lip British, mm -hmm. you know, to carry on regardless. And I think he's coped very well with it. He's probably loved the training he's been able to do with them. He's incredibly focused, isn't yeah. he? And um, as things have opened up, um, it, that he's been training and say very focused with William. He's yeah. been very structured. I think he will probably head back to Japan for a month and then come back. But I've just been blown away by how, like you said, so sort I of had one day where he was a bit like, mm. and then he's just been so professional. Yes. Very accepting of the situation. Yeah, yeah. incredible. Um, and then we've got Belle in our team who is with us from Wales, who's a... Um, an elite um, modern pentathlete was number one in Wales and and really extraordinary. And she's she's just got a great way about her on the horses and keeping everyone chirpy. And yeah. she's actually been training my poor kids in um, in running. Which... <laughs> Have they enjoyed that? <laughs> I'm not sure it's a sort of a small torch, but anyway, it's been fantastic, and we're hugely grateful um, to her. And then the wonderful Alex who's with us from South Africa. And I think it's been really tough for her because this is a huge commitment and a yeah. big decision, yeah. hasn't it? And um, we've got some breaking news that will come out on the channel later on um, next week on on an update on Alex and, and her how she's coped with corona mm -hmm. and her thoughts um, moving on after that. So, yeah, I mean, I think it's great. Thank you for asking. Um, the team are, are doing amazingly well and we're massively grateful to them and to the owners and to all our sponsors for staying supportive, yeah. aren't we? Yeah, yeah. Um, but the horses look fantastic. I know. That's been the sad thing about the whole situation because I think this year they've almost looked better than they have done before. Mm. You know, they've come out of the winter so well. And what about William? How do you feel he's coping? Well, I think he's, you know, obviously he's missed the events, but he has enjoyed his time with his chickens. Mm. It's, it's been a lot of chicken breeding. <laughs> I know. We'll give you an update on that as well. <laughs> yeah. Because I think there's around about 30 chicks that have been hatched. At least. Yes, at least. No, but, it, you know, I think it is hard for everybody, and especially when you want to compete. And, you know, his horses were ready to go this mm, year. They really Little were. Fire and Oratorio would just look fabulous mm. and really come into their own. Mm. But, you know, he's used his time well. He's been training with those here, mm -hmm. you know, and he's just been working on things that maybe needed improving on a little mm. bit and just taking it in his stride. It's really interesting because when you look at those those real pros like William and Pippa and Piggy, and, you know, they all on our Zoom call together just the other day and just talking about what they've been doing and they've been really using the opportunity to take it back to grassroots, to yeah. really take it back and really focus on 
on those basics that perhaps often they don't have time because they're going yeah. from event to event to yeah. event, haven't they? Yeah. So and you know, you you're by the time you've done your schedule for the week or you've had one school or two schools, mm. there's not always been the time just to go, well, hold on, let's explain this again, mm. you know, to the horse and work from that. Um and has it been difficult, do you think, for him um to manage the sort of the programme for the horses? Because what do you do? Yeah. I mean that's difficult in its way but they've been ticking over mm -hmm. and they've had maybe a little bit more fun you know just not so much schooling they've done a walk mm. and a trot and gone for jollies we're very lucky that we have fields here that they can be ridden around oh jackie do you know oh. what a we've got david who said you do not look a day over 30 jackie what's your miracle cream i love you david um <laughs> but we've got two minutes till we all need to be outside and clapping our fantastic nhs heroes who've been doing such an amazing job for all of us here in the uk and we're so grateful um so so grateful so that's it from us for today um, thank you, thank you for all your questions. We've really appreciated yep, it. Thanks very much. And Jackie, as ever, incredibly insightful and brilliant. So thank you so much. Probably lo loads more we could have talked about. <laughs> as ever. <laughs> yeah. That's it from us. Good night. Good night.